Dear Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Fussilat, verse 33, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Whose speech is better? Who speaks better than the one who invites others to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And while he is inviting others to Allah, he himself is doing righteous deeds and he announces to the world, I am a Muslim. Who does better than the one whose lifestyle it is to invite others to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And while he's inviting to Allah, he's not a hypocrite, he's living the life of a Muslim. وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا And he announces to the world, I too am a Muslim. Dear brothers and sisters, we live in a time and a society and a place where we are taught to mind our own business. We are taught to live and let live. We are taught that it is not polite to talk about sensitive topics like morality, like theology, like religion. Given the realities of this culture, we have to balance between the commandments of Allah and the sensitivities of the culture we find ourselves in. This land, this time, this place, it is not polite conversation to bring up religion. We all know this sometimes the hard way. You don't talk to your colleagues at work about your faith or their faith. So when people think that, okay, I'm not allowed to talk about religion at work, they misunderstand and they say, khalas, this means I cannot give da'wah. I cannot call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I cannot preach. But dear Muslims, preaching da'wah doesn't just involve theology. Da'wah is beyond debating about issues of aqidah. And at some level, every single one of us must constantly be a caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our manners, in our akhlaq, in our dealings with other people. Dear Muslims, Ibn al-Qayyim mentions the highest da'wah, the highest mechanism of calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the responsibility of the prophets. What did the prophets do, by the way? What was the task of the prophets? Their task was to give da'wah. Ibn al-Qayyim says, whoever calls to Allah has taken on the responsibility of the prophets. Because that's what you're doing, the responsibility of the prophets. And the highest mechanism to do that, it is not just by talk, it is by your actions, your sincerity, your akhlaq. Dear Muslims, you don't need to give da'wah at work by handing out pamphlets of Islam. That's going to get you fired. You don't need to give da'wah at work by knocking on other cubicles and saying, hey, what's your religion? I'm a Muslim. You can give da'wah through your honesty. You can give da'wah through your akhlaq. You can give da'wah by living a lifestyle that is very different than everybody else in your workplace. And people will come to you like they came to the Prophet ﷺ. Remember, he was known as a sadiq, the one who tells the truth before anybody says, Ya Rasulullah to him. He was called Al-Ameen, the trustworthy, before Jibreel came down and said, Iqra. A sadiq and Al-Ameen preceded the theology preceded the da'wah to any aqidah. Dear Muslims, after Ramadan, we feel an emptiness. After Ramadan, we're wondering what can we do to fill our lives. In this khutbah, the first one after Ramadan, I want to remind myself and all of you of a task and responsibility that should always be on our minds. It should always be within us. We live in a land where the majority of people don't know our faith. Even if they've heard of it, they misunderstand it. They fear it. They have xenophobia about it. Well then, if we are less than 1% of this land, and we are, we are less than 1%. If we are less than 1% of this land, surely the responsibility on us towards the 99%, towards those who don't know our faith, it becomes compounded 
Dear Muslims, I remind myself and all of you, there is no such thing in our religion as a specific person who is a da'i to Allah. This is something culturally we do. Allah did not appoint a clergy. Allah did not say, oh, this is a group that's going to give da'wah. The rest of you don't give da'wah. No, da'wah, calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an obligation on all of us at all times. Now, don't misunderstand me. There's types of da'wah. And some people, their da'wah is more intellectual, more knowing the theologies of their other people, no more refutations, and perhaps not everybody can do that, no problem. But every single one of us, without exception, every single one of us, we can strive in our daily lives amongst the people whom we interact with to give them a good impression of our faith, our tradition, our heritage. We can weave in our faith without, as they say in America, wearing it on our sleeves. And again, to be explicit, dear Muslims, understand in this culture, in the American culture we find ourselves, it is considered impolite to bring up religion explicitly amongst people whom you barely met. So be it. That's their culture. And to give da'wah effectively, you must know the culture and to some level follow it. Don't bring up religion directly. Don't ask a new person, what is your faith? But when the opportunity arises in a gentle manner, in a wise manner, the people around you should know who you are. Somebody invites you to a gathering that you don't need to go to and there's alcohol there. You say, oh, I'm sorry, I, I can't go there. I'm a Muslim. Haha, you just threw that in there. I, I don't drink alcohol. I'm a Muslim. You threw that in there. You didn't go and knock on their cubicle. Hey, I'm a Muslim convert. But you bring in something. And slowly but surely, as you get to know your friends, your colleagues, increase that awareness, increase your immediate colleagues should know, they must know of your background, they must know of your heritage. Well then, why are you ashamed to tell them about your faith when the opportunity arises? When it's time for Eid, when you have to take off for Jumu'ah, be honest and say, hey, I need to take off for Jumu'ah, I'm a Muslim, I go to the mosque to pray, Friday prayer. When it's time for Eid, the same thing. And other values that we have, bring them up and make sure your friends and colleagues are aware of your faith tradition and if they're interested they will come to you for more information and that's when you open up the detail oh yes we believe this and we believe this and that that's when you can open up the more detailed conversations my beloved brothers and sisters giving da'wah or inviting others to Islam is a noble responsibility that requires wisdom patience and a sincere approach as an ambassador of Islam the first step is to embody the teachings of Islam in one's own actions. People are often influenced more by what they see than by what they hear. So maintaining good character, honesty, humility, and kindness is essential. Living as a good example of a practicing Muslim invites curiosity and admiration, making others more open to learning about Islam it's also important to remain patient and never force the message. Dawah is about gently guiding others towards the truth. Communication in Dawah should be clear, respectful and tailored to the listener's background and understanding. As an ambassador, it is crucial to recognize that people have different knowledge levels, cultural perspectives and concerns. Engaging in conversations with an open mind and listening to their views fosters an environment of mutual respect. It helps to focus on common values such as justice, compassion and family, which resonate with people of various backgrounds, thus building bridges for meaningful dialogue. Lastly, Dawah should be rooted in knowledge. An ambassador of Islam must have a deep understanding of Islamic teachings and be prepared to answer questions accurately and thoughtfully. This includes knowing the core beliefs such as Tawheed, the oneness of God, prophethood and the purpose of life. At the same time, it's essential to handle any misunderstandings or misconceptions about Islam with calmness and clarity. Importantly, all efforts in da'wah should be done for the sake of Allah with the hope that He will guide, 
those who seek the truth.